Exercise two, clustering. In this exercise, we'll be using the R package DB scan, which will create clusters on the fly for us. The data set we'll be analyzing is Seattle, Washington police activity, and it's broken up by different crime types. So whether they be motor vehicle, parking related, or assault, among other categories, we'll be able to see what areas of Seattle you likely want to avoid based upon historical police activity. Let's go ahead and install the DB scan R package. Install dot packages DB scan. And I'll just fast forward until this completes. Okay, and the DB scan package has been installed successfully. And real quick, basically the DB scan package is a super powered version of the Tableau delivered clustering capability based upon the data you're ingesting automatically plot out the number of clusters, whereas Tableau requires you to specify manually the number of clusters that you'd like to see output on your visualization. And these clusters will be used in this particular example to call out the hotspots of criminal activity given the historical number of incidents that have occurred over time. So we'll be creating two calculated fields, one for incident count, and then one to leverage that incident count and then plot out those hotspots. So the first field we'll be creating is called incident count. Let's grab the code from the first dashboard. Apply. Okay. So the next step is to add the lat and long onto our canvas. We do this by pressing shift click to select both or by pressing control click to select multiple fields. Drag this out onto the canvas and Tableau will create a map that plots out the average of all the lat and long and that pops us right into Seattle, Washington. In order to get more granular and break up all these different points so they're not averaging just to one point, we have to add another level of detail here. So for this, we're gonna be using the at scene time. Grab the at scene time and place it on detail. Right now it's aggregating the at scene time at the year level, but we want it at the exact time that the criminal activity took place. So we'll right click, choose exact date. And now we get a picture of the exact Latin long that had an associated at scene time, which means something occurred. Let's now take our incident count field and drag that onto size. We'll set that back to an average. So now we have all these big dots that are plotting out various incidents, but it's sort of drowning out the overall picture. So let's shrink down these various circles by going to size and just sliding that slider to the left. So we get a better picture of the individual events that have occurred. There we go. All right, so the next step is to now call out the clusters or hotspots on this map. Right now we can kind of see some of the hotspots, but let's use the R package DB scan to plot those for us. Let's navigate to our calc fields dashboard and we'll copy our hotspot code. Create calc field. We'll call this hotspot. And paste in that R code. 
and this is telling the DB scan package to take a look at the inputs. So arg1, arg2, lat, long, and also take, take into account the number of incidents that have occurred, the average of that, and then create a series of clusters depending upon how close all of these marks end up being on the map. Let's hit okay. We'll drag hotspot at this point in time onto color. And then we're gonna immediately cancel it because it's gonna take much too long to calculate the clusters and they won't be accurate because we have yet to define what the compute scope is. So hit cancel. And now we're going to right click on hotspot, compute using, and we'll be using the at scene time. And that's why we need the at scene time on our detail shelf as well. Okay, so there you have it. The DB scan package took a look at all the data we sent to R and came back identifying yes or no that a given area is a hotspot for criminal activity. We can now see that there's hotspots all over the map of Seattle based upon the data that we fed R. And now this is extremely, extremely helpful for police because they could overlay all the streets that they could potentially now patrol and assign officers to go through these areas. And speaking of different activities, let's go ahead and add the initial type group as a filter. And that gives us the ability to see the various criminal activity types. So if we take a look at just the assaults, we'll have to manually deselect each of these initial types. And as you can see, it's taking quite some time to pass that data back to R and update the filters. So what I recommend doing is actually modifying the filter type by going to the dropdown, customize, and then apply. This allows you to pre-select what you're looking to analyze and then press apply. And that only fires off one query versus having them all happen sequentially. So if we just take a look at the assaults, we can see the hotspots are right here in downtown and this area just north. Liquor violations right here in this downtown area. Residential burglaries. a much different cluster zone than what we saw before. They're right in these areas. So this is more in the suburbs than downtown. And that's why more burglaries are occurring in these areas. And if we add all the data back, we once again get that holistic picture of all of the criminal activity that's happened in Seattle. And now we can use this data to then proactively go out, assign officers to patrol these various areas and how they can potentially get ahead of all this criminal activity and crack down on it and then see how it's changing over time. This concludes the exercise on using clusters. In our next exercise, we'll take a look at sentiment analysis. Let's go ahead and move on to the next exercise.